Okay, welcome back, everyone. We're we're continuing our uh, interview with uh, Dr. Beatriz uh, Villarreal and uh, uh, Souls um, in Stanford's uh, Gary Nolan is uh, with us to uh, really at this point now to have a discussion about the significance of the this not just the results but this kind of project for science. Um, you know, both of you undertake uh, research that. Uh, you know, to most scientists is extremely uh, controversial uh, because it concerns uh, UAP or at least the possibility of um, artifacts uh, not made by human beings. Uh, Gary does that in the context of material science currently and Beatrice, we've been discussing your work. So I have a, you know, a, a question for both of you, which, you know, as a, as a non-scientist, as a social scientist or humanist, um, uh, uh, is is raised for me every time I think about your work, both of your work, is, you know, how does this get you, this kind of research gets you to the heart of what science is? Because we forget that at the times before paradigm shifts and breakthroughs, uh, people think scientists are absolutely crazy for pursuing new hypotheses, new ideas, um, uh, uh, heretical uh, innovations. Go ahead, Beatrice if you'd like first. Well, I'm just a very curious person. I just want to have answers to the things that are, that I'm wondering about. So I guess there is something, well, what can we call it? A little bit of a hedonist approach I have uh, in science that I just do what is fun. I enjoy exploring certain ideas, certain directions. I move where my curiosity goes and it led me in this direction. It led me into uh, trying to understand whether they are UFOs and what they are, if they are physical objects like flying saucers or not. And that's all I can say for my own sake. It's, it's just a discovery and exploration in data for me. So I take it from a couple of different angles. First, kind of the b before and after. The before is, you know, when I published the Council Bluffs paper, which I think is frankly a minor paper in terms of whatever it is that we attempted to conclude, um, and how careful we were in the language, as opposed to the kind of biology language that I write about in my cancer biology and immunology papers, where even though I'm just as careful in what I say, I'm more confident in putting forward ideas because I know that they're going to be accepted by the community much more readily. And so I, I think we're, we're further than we were four years ago when I published the other paper. Um, but still not in this confidence realm uh, where we can put forward uh, speculation that won't be immediately uh, attacked. You know, there's skeptical attack versus, you know, just out, outright, uh, you know, malevolent attack. Um, but I think, again, the good thing about how science is done, and I push this idea constantly, you know, don't put the I don't put a conclusion or even the data out there until you've at the very least filtered it or make sure that you found sorry all of the um, negative uh, inputs or problems that could be there because you don't want you don't want Twitter to find the obvious problem for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I again applaud what uh, Beatrice did and that even though she's only been, talking about the transients, I think over the last year off and on, I had no sense of the amount of effort that had gone on behind the scenes already to produce the papers uh, up to the level of where they are. Uh, and so that, that speaks to how science is supposed to be done. I, and I'm sorry to say, it's not how the Nazca mummies should have been done. It's not how the Bugosphere has been done. Uh, and so I just hope that early 
scientists coming along or starting even amateur scientists, I don't really mean that in a negative sense, uh, realize that there is value to being careful and not running to the internet the moment you think you have something. Uh, and uh, that science, while it's not sacred in its rules, it's a process by which uh, so much accomplishment has been done by humanity that it is worth making sure when we're coming to a problem like UAP that we apply the same stricture to it. Um, and I know I'm speaking to the converted in many ways, but there's a lot of people who don't appreciate that yet and are constantly asking me on various threads or in venues, you know, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? Well, maybe I am doing it, but I'm just not ready to tell you yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, follow the leaders in how they're doing it. Um, and uh, because we've lived in worlds where that's the norm. And, you know, we hope that the next cadre of leaders is going to come forward, having seen that it, we actually didn't get blown out of the water the moment we stuck our toe in it. Yeah, I, I must say, I always had a, like, a problem with that some people think that there are questions like the UFO questions that basically can't be tested. That they, that they believe that no, this is so much, you know, it's so so complicated and they, they form verse, they form almost ideas or hypo that cannot be tested through hypothesis. And I'm thinking that if there is such an effect, such a big effect that so many people see that you have mass sightings, this should be testable. And I believe in the scientific method. You form the hypothesis, you uh, put forward your test and you go and carry it out and then you analyze the data and see what's the outcome. Is there try there's of course going to be a lot of trial and error and you might have to refine the hypothesis, you might try to try another one. But still, I think everything can be tested. And I don't um I just don't submit to the idea of that the UFO question is so complicated that you can't try to ex well to test it out with science. So I have a question for you, Beatrice. Yeah. Um, can these experiments be done today, given all the... Oh my know, God, yes, that's the trouble. That's a serious trouble, how to do it today. And I wrote another paper where about how we can do it today, where we apply the Earth's shadow to filter away all the satellites right, and all right. the space debris. Because but then do, we we have can... to, do we have to blow up a nuclear bomb to do it? <laughs> I would prefer not to have to do that. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm wondering, like, how can we check it? Maybe we need to search for these objects at 80,000 kilometers height. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to go at big altitudes. Maybe Avi and the Galileo project can all, like, uh, give us ideas of how to do this much further out. How, about, think. how about regional conflicts that are sub uh, sub nuclear? Because there's so much in the literary history of stuff showing up over the battlefields of Alexander the Great or uh, Chinese warlords, etc. Uh, you know, are, are are some other transients waiting to be correlated to troop movements? Well, there is this group from Ukraine, from right. Kiev Observatory. And they had seen uh, UAPs of two two different sorts. I forgot what they call them. Uh, and I forgot the names. I remember what, close yeah. to the war zone. And of course, we were wondering, like, is are they watching some secret uh, weapons, or are they watching actual UAPs? It's super difficult because, again, it's the, the same trouble. When very often when you do science, you have degeneracy between two different interpretations, and you need to try to find a way of knowing which is it that is. There's a great and... documentary that I won't go into great length on called uh, Chimp Empire, where anthropologists had settled themselves amongst these chimpanzees in a forest for 40 years so that they essentially became invisible. Uh, mm -hmm. and, but they were able then to watch the conflicts and film the conflicts amongst the chimpanzees in real time because the chimpanzees just ignored them. So maybe we're the chimpanzees and we've been so 
uh, attuned to the ignoring these things uh, in our environment that we don't see them when they're actually there to watch what they consider to be uh, a, a an interesting human event. Now I'm speculating, but you know, Daily Mail will say tomorrow something different. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.